everyone and welcome back to the third installment of Progress Log Miss. This video was filmed over a two week period and there was a lot of procrastination involved. I was primarily working on my Christmas costume and my Edwardian costume. And though the Edwardian project continued to go really well and was a lot of fun, I had some trouble with figuring out a design I was excited about for my Christmas costume, and executing it proved to be difficult too, so I spent a lot of time avoiding working on that, and because of that I wasn't quite as productive as I'd hoped to be, but it was still a fun couple of weeks and I managed to get quite a bit done. Not only did I make some major progress on my Christmas costume, I also finished my Edwardian costume and a blouse to go underneath it, and I began work on three headpieces and finished two of them. So productivity-wise, it wasn't a bad week, it just wasn't quite the week I hoped it would be. I've already edited this video, so I know it's going to be quite long, so I'm just going to get right into it and say that I hope you enjoy seeing all of that productivity and a little bit of that procrastination take place. So I'm starting off the day with my desk looking like this, and that's because I was writing book reviews for a good portion of yesterday as well as this morning. I've got 13 written so far and I probably have another 10 to do. I'm going to take photos of the interior of all of them so I can start getting that post together, and then I'm going to get out these stack of ones that I need to review tomorrow, and then I can finally get to work on doing some sewing. One of the main things I want to work on is a hat to go with this project. I want to get the hat done as quickly as I can so I can photograph this project. And it'll also mean I have a hand sewing project to work on downstairs, which will be nice. I'd also like to work more on the green Edwardian dress. The more I look at this, the more disappointed I am in the construction with it. It just isn't quite what I'd hoped it would be but I still think it's pretty and I'm still going to finish it. I need to do a bit of work on the lining's hem since in certain points it's longer than the overlay, which doesn't look very good, and I'm going to fix that by doing a horizontal dart across the points where it's too long, and that way I don't have to mess with the horsehair braid and the hem. I'm also going to try and get lace onto the neckline and potentially work a little bit on the waistband. Over here is the hat progress I have so far. It's just an oval cut from buckram with a smaller oval cut out from the center. And then I cut out an oval that's one eighth of an inch smaller than the center of that and a band to go around the oval. This type of hat is called a bergeret. Bergeret? I don't know. That's what I'm attempting to make and I need to sew wire into this piece and this piece so it'll hold its shape. And I'm going to do that today, and then I'm going to try and get it covered today as well so I can start fiddling around with all the trim. It's going to have some of the same ruffled trim that I used on the dress going around the brim, so I can work on that as well as making potentially some puff trim and some bows to go on the hat. I sewed a bit of black lace around the neckline of this dress, and then I pinned the appliques on. I got these appliques from an Etsy store that I can link down below. And though it isn't showing up that way on camera, they do match the fabric pretty much perfectly. They're just a slightly darker shade of green. I think I've said it already, but this fabric is green. It just appears very blue on camera. Now the task is sewing the appliques on, and then I think I'm actually going to embellish around them a little bit, which I'm excited about. I have some really pretty vintage black sequins that I think will complement the trim and the fabric really nicely. I got the appliques sewn on, and now it's time to sew some sequins on around them. I'm using these stunning vintage sequins that a reader of my blog actually sent me a few years back, and I'm so excited to use them. I love them so much, and they have so many pretty colors in them, and I think they're going to complement this perfectly. So I'm excited to get to sewing these on, and hopefully I can find something good to watch on YouTube while I do it. So I got sequins sewn on around the appliques, and I also sewed on the waistband, or at least tacked it to the front. It's going to be sewn on to the back seam eventually as well. It's just a gathered piece of netting, and it's the type of netting that is used for mounting lace, not tool and not stretch mesh. It's something in between that is stronger, but still has that delicate weave and doesn't have a shine to it. I gathered a strip of it down, then I just put some sequins on the sides over top of the gathering, and I think it looks really pretty, but I want to carry the sequins up to the side which will make it more sparkly which is obviously better and will also make it quite slimming since it'll define the waist a little bit better. So I'm excited about this and I would love to keep working on it but I have a video going up today and I'm getting hungry so I think I'm going to go downstairs and get both of those things sorted out and then watch some TV and work on the hat that I cut out earlier today. Hi guys, so my camera's on low battery so I'm going to try and talk fast. I didn't film anything yesterday because it was kind of a frustrating day and I focused a lot on trying to figure out my Christmas project for this year. 
I need to get started on this really soon and as of yesterday I still didn't have an idea for it. What I really wanted to do is make a whole dress out of this sparkly snowflake fabric because it's so pretty and I love how it drapes but it really doesn't go with the crown or the environment uh, that I usually photograph my Christmas projects in. And it also doesn't really evolve from the one I made last year. It's a completely different dress. So I've decided to make this dress out of this fabric sometime in January when we have snow or potentially even for next year's Christmas project. And this year I'm going to make something out of the red velvet that's draped and I'm going to try and dress it up with fake flowers and potentially make a matching staff or something. I also got some beads so I can make a long necklace for this, which I think will help add a bit of interest at least on the upper half. So that's where I am right now, and I'm going to start drafting this today. I got the pattern draped, and then I transferred it onto paper, so it's ready to be cut out and used. Now the logical thing to do would be making a mock-up so I can ensure that it fits. Since this is so low cut, the fit is very, very important. But part of getting it to fit really nicely is incorporating a lot of boning, as you can see all the boning channels. So it stays up and has its own shape, even when it isn't being worn. And adding all of that boning is going to be pretty time consuming. So I think I'm just going to assemble the lining for the costume and assume that it's going to fit perfectly. And then if it doesn't fit, I can make these slight alterations or I can make some major alterations, which I would have to do anyway if I made a mock-up and then made the lining. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm hoping it'll save me time. The top layer of this project is going to be velvet, but I'm going to line it with this cotton because it sort of matches and has some Christmas spirit to it. And it's also a really inexpensive quilter's cotton, so it's quite stiff and a little bit thicker than the higher quality ones, and most certainly thicker than a lot of the traditional linings you can buy. So I'm hoping that will help support the bodice a little bit too, without me having to add canvas or something really heavy and difficult to sculpt. So that's my plan, and I'll keep you informed on how it works for me. Also, the movie hasn't even come out yet, but I've been listening to three of these songs non-stop and I'm so obsessed with them and I know all the words and I've been dancing around my sewing room this morning as I work on things because they get me in such a good mood. Alright so it's been a few hours and this is what I'm currently working with. I got the base layer assembled and I fitted it and then I added boning and folded all of the edges except for the arm openings inward. I really lucked out because it fits pretty much perfectly. The only thing I had to do was turn the neckline inward a little bit more since I thought it looked a little too sweetheartish, but that was a very easy fix. The only mistake I can really see with this so far is that I didn't have boning extend up into those corners, and those corners are supposed to support the sleeves. So I think I'm going to have to sew some ribbon boning channels in just to make sure that those points stay pointy. But so far I'm really pretty happy with it. And I'm going to call it quits on this project for today. As much as I would love to continue working on it, my camera is dying and my memory card is almost full and it's time to do some editing and then I'll revisit this tomorrow. In addition to editing this afternoon, I'd like to finish my hat, which has come a long way. I got all the edges trimmed with wire and then I covered the bottom and top layer with shanting. The edge is finished with bias tape and it's lined with striped organza and then I used striped organza trim on the exterior and I'm making some puff trim out of taffeta just to finish it off. Um, I might actually add a little bit of trim to the top of the hat too because it's a little bit uneven. I had originally expected that to be covered and I have some braided blue trim that I think would match nicely. And then I just have to make a couple bows and glue on some feathers and it'll be finished. So. I'd also like to do some work on the Edwardian project. I got the dart sewn into the top of the skirt so the hem is nice and level now. And I think it's time to dress up the hem so I'm going to use this green trim. And I don't know if you'll be able to tell but it's actually two separate designs which means you can cut it down the center without ruining any of the trim. So that's what I'm going to do and that will turn this two yard length of trim into four yards which is enough to trim the hem of the skirt with. And if I finish that and still have time I'm going to continue adding sequins to the bodice and focusing them around the side seams and the waistline just to create the illusion of my waist being more cinched in. Hello everyone, so it's a new day. I didn't film very much yesterday because I ended up doing a little bit of work on my Christmas project which is right in front of me here. And then I added a blog post and did a bunch of baking. So this is how the Christmas project is coming along so far. The base for the bodice is finished and it fits and it doesn't fall down. So I'm very happy with that. And the next step is going to be draping and cutting out the velvet overlay. 
and I'm sort of nervous about that, so I'm putting it off, and I'm going to work on something else today. Finish adding sequins to the left side of the Edwardian project. As you can see, there are significantly more sequins on the right side, and I would like to balance that out. I also have trim to sew onto the hem, and getting a start on that would be good. Hello everyone! So it's been a few days since I filmed anything, but I'm back to work. Yesterday was Black Friday, and the day before that was Thanksgiving, so I was just spending time with my family. So I did manage to get a little bit of sewing done. Most of that sewing was on the Edwardian project. I finished embellishing the waistline. As you can see, the sequins are a lot more dense and splay out more than they did before. I also added more around the neckline. I added some to the back as well, and then I turned the back edge inward, and I sewed up the back seam. I sewed the back seam with the satin layer and the chiffon layer separately, so it has a nice floaty effect. I turned this edge inward by hand so you can't really see the stitches, and now I'm just sewing hooks and bars into it and keeping my fingers crossed that it will fit. I haven't tried it on over my corsets yet, but I have tried it on without them, and it fits really nicely, so I'm feeling pretty confident about that. In addition to adding closures to this today, I want to get the sleeves drafted and cut out and hopefully embellished, and I would also like to start on a headband or some sort of headpiece to go with it. And I was going to explain more, but the vacuum just turned on, so I think I will update you in a few minutes when that's done. Series 5 of Tokidoki Unicornos came out last week, and I ordered 5 of them online, and I think 4 of them were from the seller. If you haven't been following me for a while, then you might not know my obsession with these, but it's a strong obsession, and I'm excited to add more to the herd. So I thought I would just unbox it with you guys since I'm so excited. They're so cute! I love them! <laughs> To be honest, I feel like the paint quality of these are quite poor. There are a lot of little spots on them that aren't meant to have color and little nicks on them, but they're still really cute, especially from a slight distance, and I'm happy to add them to my collection. So now I have to find little homes for them. So I just finished sewing in the closures, and I also sewed the waist ties on to the back. Um, so now they won't flop about and show the visible seam underneath. The thing I wanted to mention earlier is that I got the trim sewn onto the hemline, and then I embellished it with some sequins. There were some natural little curls in it that lend themselves well to being embellished, so I decided to go for that because, you know me, I love sequins and I feel compelled to use them on everything. So now this dress just needs sleeves, and then I have to finish the little bodice that goes underneath it. I don't think I've actually shown that to you. Um, I finished it... I got it almost finished several weeks ago, I just have to add binding to the bottom edge. So I'd like to do that in addition to drafting the sleeves today. And I finished my 18th century hat a couple days ago, so I'm going to show you that. Here it is! I think it's very cute and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I made a bow out of some of the striped taffeta, which matches the puffed trim and the dress. And then I added two large ostrich feathers to it. Originally there was going to be some braided trim going around the top edge, but I forgot about that. And I glued the feathers on, and after the feathers were on, it was going to be very difficult to add the trim. It's still possible, it's just going to be more challenging, so I've decided to hold off, and if I feel like it's missing something or it needs the trim later on, then I can add it then. So now I'm going to get back to work and drape the sleeves, and I'll show you what I'm up to then. I just came upstairs, and this is what I walked into. I think it's time to do some tidying before getting started. It's slightly better. It'll work for now, at least. I wanted to show you what I've been up to. Yesterday, I quit the day early because I had editing to do and some hand sewing to do downstairs. And also because my sewing machine got jammed and I got so frustrated that I just needed a break. And then that break was longer than I had intended. But today I'm back to work. I've already filmed the intro for the second vlog and done a bit of tidying and done some editing. So I'm happy with that. And now it's time to get to sewing. So I drafted the sleeves yesterday and then I cut them out of satin and satin face chiffon. I had just barely enough of the green fabric to cut out the sleeves, except for that part. As you can see, I was running a little bit short, but I'm happy that I had enough because I wasn't really expecting that I would have enough. I know I talked about that in the last vlog. I cut it pretty close when I was cutting out the lining for the dress. Then I sewed the pieces together so the bottom edge was finished and then I sewed lace and a double strip of netting onto it and I embellished it lightly with some sequins. So I like how this looks but I did a quick little fitting and the sleeves are too long so I'm actually going to cut a half inch off the top edge and then I can sew them onto the dress. Here's a piece of netting that I cut out and then I sewed bits of lace onto it. This is actually the same lace trim that I used on the hem of the skirt. 
I just cut it up into individual pieces so it would look a little bit different while still matching. And my plan is to cover most of the black netting with sequins, and then I will have a pretty little headpiece that matches this project. I was very tempted to make a hat, but I do feel like a headband and something a little bit more subtle is more appropriate for this project and the time of day it was meant to be worn in. So I'm going to go ahead and fix up the sleeves, and then hopefully I can get the sleeves on the bodice today. That would be pretty cool, and I might actually be able to finish this project, which would be even cooler. So I cut the sleeves so they're half inch shorter, and then I sewed lace binding to the top edge so they won't fray, and I did this for the arm openings on the dress too. So now it's just time to sew the side seam of the sleeves up, and then I can sew them onto the dress. There was a little bit of guesswork involved in drafting the sleeves, so I'm really hoping they fit and look really nice once they're attached to the dress and that I don't have to gather them or anything like that. The sleeves are on and it looks so pretty. I just did a quick little fitting without the corset and I'm so happy with how it fits on the shoulder and the length of them and the color of this dress and the embellishments. I just... I love everything about it. Unfortunately it looks a lot less glorious on camera but in person it's beautiful and I'm so excited to wear it and to finish the matching headpiece so I can get photos in it. I think I might even make this the subject of a get ready with me type of video so then I can show it in a little bit more detail and show you how I'm going to style it since it's a relatively simple dress. I think hairstyles and stuff like that matter a little bit more. But before wearing it, as I said, I have to finish the headpiece, which I will probably do tonight. And I also have to finish the blouse that goes underneath it and makes it a little bit more modest. So I have that mostly finished, but I'll show it to you and show you what I have to do to get it completely finished. This is the blouse. It's made out of cotton and silk and vintage lace. I think it's really pretty. I don't know how nice it will look underneath the dress, but I'm going to finish it as if I plan on wearing them together, which was the original plan, and then I can always wear the dress without it if I feel like it takes away from it. But I'm happy with this as a garment. I think it's really pretty, and I like how all the different types of lace work together, um, and also the little bit of sheen that the lace has since there's a silk satin underneath it. What I still have to do on this blouse is finish the bottom edge. I'm going to finish it with bias tape and then have the bias tape continue for about 10 inches on either side so it can form a tie at the back and help keep it in place. And I'm also going to add some sequins to the neckline just to make it look a little bit more fancy, uh, which I think will make it look better with the dress. I ended up trimming the bottom edge with lace instead of bias binding. When I looked at it, I realized that there was a snap really close to the waistline, so there really didn't need to be a tie in addition to that. And after doing that, I added sequins around the neckline. Not very many, just enough to add some sparkle. And then I did the same thing for the cuffs. So aside from the headpiece, this project is completely finished, and I'm actually going to go downstairs and work on the headpiece now and do a bit of editing and stuff, because I've been slacking a little bit and I have a bunch of videos that need to go up next okay. week. Last night I got quite a bit of work done on the headpiece. As you can see, I got all of the pieces of lace sewn onto the mesh, and then I embellished them quite heavily with sequins. And then I turned the edge of the netting inward so it isn't sticking out and distracting from the sparkle. I want to make this even more elaborate by adding some feathers. I have some really cool black rooster feathers as well as some dyed green cut geese feathers which I think would look really cool on this. But I want to attach those with E6000 which is a very strong glue that has cancerous fumes. So I think I'm going to do that later in the day when I'm done with everything else so I won't have to sit in a room that smells like it for the rest of the day. In the meantime I'm going to work on my Christmas project or my 1880s project. I haven't decided which. I've kind of been procrastinating on both of them because I'm not really sure how to move forward with either of them. But now that all of my other projects are finished, I really have to. So I'll update you guys when I know what I'm doing. So yesterday, I oh so cleverly forgot to charge my camera. So I couldn't get as much filming done as I want, and I basically was trying to conserve as much power as I could, which is why I didn't film any clips for this video, but I'll show you what I was up to yesterday, and hopefully managed to get quite a bit more done today and documented a bit better. I did manage to finish the Edwardian headband. As you can see, it's now covered with feathers. I added a couple to the top of it, but most of them are mounted on the bottom, and I used E6000 for this, which is a clear, very flexible glue, but it's also very strong, so hopefully it will hold up. And now this costume is officially complete, and I can go ahead and take worn photos of it, which I'm really excited about. My other project is the Christmas costume, and I'm actually feeling a lot better about this. I don't think it looks very good on the dress form, but I got the front panels sewn together and gathered, and I also got the back panels gathered and cut out and drafted, because yesterday I didn't even know what the back panels were going to look like. So I'm very happy with that. Now I have to sew the side seams together, and then I can start sewing it onto the base, though I might add the silver 
over trimmed my base first and then sewed the velvet over top of it. I haven't quite decided. At this Hello everyone, so it's been a couple days since I last updated you. The last couple days have not gone particularly well progress wise, I just haven't been motivated at all. And I know that's not a good reason to not work, like regardless of motivation you should be getting things done. But I just have felt so unenthusiastic about my Christmas project and the 1880s project and I just wanted to do anything but them, but I don't really want to start on a new project before finishing one of them. And so last night I decided, even if I wasn't going to work on those projects, I should do something. So I drafted a top hat, which will hopefully be worn with an 1870s riding costume at some point, or at least that's the plan. I don't know if it's quite the right shape for a top hat from that period. I did use a few references for it, but I didn't invest that much time into drafting it. Uh, which is probably a mistake, but it's a little late now. I've sewn wire into the brim and the top piece, and then I just cut out the piece that will connect them, and I'm going to sew wire th into this today. And hopefully I can also get the pieces covered today. I'm just going to use a black suiting for it. And yeah, that's what I've been up to this morning. I should probably be working on my Christmas project, which is here. I don't know if you can tell, but it's very baggy here. And it doesn't quite fit my dress form well enough for me to adjust that on the dress form. So I really need to be wearing it and adjusting it, but it doesn't have any closures, so it doesn't stay on me unless I'm holding it on me, and I can't do that while also adjusting the pins. So I don't really know what to do. I think I'm going to sew the waistline, so tack the velvet to the lining waistline, and then, I don't know, baste a zipper in and put it on and try doing it that way. I feel sort of stuck with this project, and I don't really have the time to let myself figure it out over a couple weeks, because it needs to be done next week. So I might work on this a little bit today and then move on to the 1880s project and see. I sewed the waistline of the velvet layer to the lining and then I pinned it onto my dress form and I've actually had quite a bit of luck with getting rid of the excess fabric underneath the bust. I won't really be able to tell until I try it on but the left side which is the one I fiddled with looks a lot better than the right side so I think that's pretty promising. So I'm very happy to report that I fixed the draping issues. It took me all of 10 minutes and five of those were getting the dress pinned onto the dress form. And then I just adjusted the way the velvet lays and pinned it down. And it looks great. I just tried it on and I'm really happy with it. But I also feel kind of stupid because I avoided working on this for like two days. Because I thought this was going to be really difficult to fix. And it wasn't. But I'm really pleased that this is in a state that I'm happy with and feel comfortable moving forward with. So I'm definitely going to work on this tomorrow and hopefully make a lot more progress on it. Hello everyone. So I'm off to an early start this morning because I've realized that the best day to photograph this project would be this Sunday, which gives me two days to finish it and it's nowhere near done. But I'm hoping if I invest four hours every day into working on this and make the matching accessories off camera, uh, then I can make them this afternoon and hopefully get this finished in time to photograph it Sunday morning. That would be the most convenient as far as scheduling goes, otherwise I'm going to have to photograph it on the weekend before Christmas, and since we photograph things on a Christmas tree farm, it's going to be really busy. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work. I want to sew the neckline onto the lining, then I want to turn this edge inward and hem the bottom edge of the sleeves, and also sew the back edge to the lining, and then I can start sewing in the eyelets, which will probably be the most time-consuming part. So after an hour of work, this is what I'm left with, and I'm very happy with how it's coming along. I got all the edges turned inward and then whip stitched them to the lining, and I also hemmed the bottom edge of the little sleeve strap things. I am going to be adding another strap just to make them appear thicker, but I'm going to do that after I can do a proper fitting, and to do a proper fitting I have to sew in the eyelets. So that's going to be my next task for today. I'm halfway through, so I got all the eyelets on one side done. They aren't the prettiest eyelets I've ever done, but in my defense, I didn't have embroidery floss that was the right color, and velvet is ridiculously difficult to sew and have it look nice, so I'm pretty happy with them. I just hope they don't tear out when I dry the bodice on. I now have the other side to do, but my neck is bugging me a little bit, so I think I'm going to do the other side while sitting down, and then I can give my neck a little bit of a break and resume filming once I'm done but hopefully I got enough footage when I was doing this side for the video. Someone has realized I'm sitting on the chair without her and is very upset. She's going to be so mad at me later. 
So the eyelids are done and now I'm going to try it on and if the fitting is successful then I'm going to cut out the additional straps. Then all this dress will need is to be hemmed and to have some flowers and beads sewn onto it. The end is definitely in sight though I'm still not sure if I'll be able to finish it tomorrow or not. I'm feeling more confident than I was when I started the day. So I just did a fitting and it went relatively well. However I think it needs to be a little bit smaller which is difficult to do since there's so much boning in it. Uh, but I'm going to try and do darts like right there and cinch the waist in by maybe another inch. I think that'll really improve the silhouette overall. But it did stay up, which I'm happy about, and I liked how the straps looked, the draping of everything. So it was mostly a success. Now I'm going to cut out and hem the straps slash sleeves and hopefully get them sewn on or at least get them gathered down and then I can sew them on tomorrow. The straps slash sleeves are hemmed and gathered and ready to be attached to the bodice, but this is where I'm gonna call it quits on this project for today, or at least on the dress portion of this project. I am planning on working on the necklace as well as the staff, and I'm gonna take my camera downstairs and try and update you while I make progress on those. But the next thing on my agenda for today is photographing a headpiece for a video that's going up tomorrow. So that means I have to put makeup on and find a costume to wear with it and find a wig that's appropriate and then photograph that. And then I can work on the accessories for this project, which I'm really excited about because I haven't done anything like that in a long time. So here's my stick. I also have a box full of stuff. There's ribbon and lights and various fake flowers and berries and things. And then I have my hot glue gun. So hopefully I can combine this all together and make something really all great. Alright, so it's later in the day now and I've finished the staff and I'm very happy with how it turned out. And I'm going to show it to you guys tomorrow. It's currently downstairs since it's so tall it's kind of difficult to get up the stairs and it just isn't worth dragging it up here. But I will show it to you soon. Now my current plan is to make the necklace to go with this project. Since it has a very low neckline there's a lot of exposed skin and I thought a necklace would help break that up. I have a variety of different types of pearls and then these are the things I bought specifically for this project. So I've got these really pretty blood red beads that match the velvet. And then I also got these sort of center stones that have this really pretty, not iridescence, but opalescence to them almost where they shine a bunch of different colors. So I'm going to use one of these as a pendant and then I'm going to use these to surround it. I also have a little bit of this rhinestone trim left over that was used on the headpiece I'm going to wear with this project. So if I can incorporate that in some way that would be cool. Uh, so I'm just going to play around with this a little bit and I'll show you what I turn it into. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like but it will probably be relatively simple and hopefully pretty quick to put together. I'm kind of worried that this is going to fall apart since I made it using Fireline and a six pound weight because that's the highest weight I had that was clear and I need it to be clear for some of these beads. So please keep your fingers crossed for me that this doesn't fall apart during the photos or even after the photos because I would like to have it for a while because I think it turned out really pretty. I used the glass beads for the portion that's going to be shown and then I just filled it in with pearls to get it to the right length I wanted and then it has a clasp at the back. I also used some of that chain that I showed you and there wasn't any way to mount this properly uh, to the clasp so I just sort of tied it on with thread and I'm hoping it'll hold up. And then I hung a few more crystal pieces from it and I think the end result is really pretty and if it does hold up, it's going to complement this dress really nicely. So I'm excited about that. And now it's time to go put up the Christmas tree. Hello everyone, so it's a new day and I'm off to a new start. But I thought before getting started I would show you the staff. As you can see, it's covered in a lot of those fake velvet flowers as well as some glittery pine sprigs and some glittery pine cones. There are lights on it too. I used the same type of lights that were originally used on the headpiece, so it should match really nicely. I think part of the reason this turned out so well is because I used to collect logs of wood and save the cute ones from the wood pile and then decorate them with ribbon and tape and paint so they could lead the lives they were meant to have before they became a tree or something. I don't know what my logic was. I was five, but it definitely prepared me for a project like this and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Much happier than I was expecting to be because I found it pretty hard to visualize when I was in Michaels just looking at decorations. Like how on earth am I going to make a stick look pretty and Christmassy without spending a fortune on decorations? And I think I managed it, so I'm really happy with that. And on this note, I think I'm going to end this video and keep you in suspense over whether or not I finished my Christmas project today, managed to get it photographed tomorrow. I'm going to do a quick little sit down wrap up at the end of this video because 
I honestly do not remember what I accomplished. I've been filming this video for two weeks and I haven't edited it yet and I don't even remember. So I'm gonna go over all of that in the wrap up. I think I went through most of what I accomplished in the intro, but I'll go through it again now. I managed to complete my Edwardian costume, which I'm really happy with. I think it's so simple and elegant but beautiful and I'm just thrilled with the end result. I also managed to design, draft, and construct my Christmas costume and a few matching accessories. And I'm really happy with how that's turning out too. It's not my favorite Christmas costume I've ever made, but considering at the beginning of this week I had no idea what I was going to do and the ideas I did have I wasn't happy with at all, I think it's come out fantastically. I'm also really happy with the accessories I've made to go with it. I think the necklace and the staff complement it really nicely. I also started on a top hat and I finished a hat to go with my 18th century costume, which means that project is completely finished, which is awesome. The only thing I'm disappointed about is that I didn't make any progress on my 1880s dress. That's something I would like to finish before the year is up and it's nowhere near being done, so I really need to get my butt in gear and get started on that and get it finished up. But I guess that will be a task for the next week or two, and if you're interested in seeing that, then you should definitely subscribe or stick around because I will have another progress log up next week. And as per usual, additional information for the things mentioned in this video will be linked down below, so check that out if you're interested. And thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, and I will talk to all of you very soon.